this is our typical eBay purchase that we're going to try and restore uh, over the winter and uh, show you what you need to know and take a look at taking it apart and rebuilding it. So first of all, we've put it on our ramp. Before you put it on the stand, I'll definitely check your suspension just to make sure it goes up and down smoothly, not stiff or bouncy, and the same on the front. We normally work from the uh, rear of the machine to the front or front to the rear, but today I'm going to start at the back and we're going to start with tyres. These are slightly low, but you're not looking for any cracking, bulging or tears. And just go right the way around, keep looking across the whole of the tyre. If you get to the edge here, you can see that there's some slight cracking just here. So I'll generally replace these tyres. And again, you'll check on the other side. And checking the wheel rim for any dents, bulges, cracks again, and just checking that it's true. On a steel rim, you will have a little bit of flex, but you shouldn't expect any more than about four millimetres. Next, I'll check the spokes. Now, to do this, you can do it two ways. You can check the flex in every single one, which I'd recommend, but you can also just use a screwdriver and check for a different tone. If you're getting a different tone that's different to the others, you know that you've probably got a loose spoke. I'm going to show you how to check your spoke. They should all be tight and uniform, and you'll feel it in your fingers. So I'll show you how you do it. If you see that they're flexing at the same rate and they feel quite stiff, you just go around on every individual pair, just checking them like this. If you see here, this one has got a lot of flex in it. So you know that it needs adjusting because it's loose. And that can also cause problems if it breaks and like that. So it's something you need to address. So use your spoke tool. Um, and we're going to adjust the spoke, which will be in this way. And you'll feel it's starting to tighten up. Just keep going until you feel a bit of resistance. And when you feel a slight bit of resistance, just stop and recheck the tension. And you can see now that this spoke has still got a tiny little bit of play, but it's better than before, so you know you're going in the right direction. And just turn it. It's great. And again, just continue to check to make sure that you haven't got any other loose ones. And again, we're going to look at the inner tube as well and the valve, just to make sure there's no leaks or anything else. That looks okay. So we've checked the tyre, the rim, the spokes. So now we're just going to make sure that the wheel bearing's okay. And to do that, just hold the wheel in like a six o'clock motion and you just push and pull with one hand to the other. And obviously you can see a little bit of movement here, but that's just the stand moving and you would definitely feel, you know, like a clonk. Um, there, so that's fine. Just check it in three places, just to make sure. And again, there we go. Okay, there is a slight bit of movement here, um, but nothing to be concerned about on this bike. So if you just turn the wheel slowly, just making sure you're not got any grouchiness or grinding, which we haven't, so that wheel bearing's okay. So we've checked the rear uh, and now we've worked our way to the front of the vehicle. Again, it's pretty much similar to the check in the back. We're just going to look at the front tyre, again, for any cracks or bulges, tears, anything like that. So we're just going to go through that. Just looking for any cracks in the sidewall. Um, but this tyre looks quite good. Um, and again, on the other side, no problems there at all. Again, we're going to check the spokes like we did on the rear. We do that on both sides. Now we're going to check the steering bearings. So you just want to obviously support the vehicle, make sure it's securely strapped down. And you just turn them gently from side to side. Pay particular attention to the centre. You don't want any notches or grooves, which these feel fine. And then just give it a good turn. They're fine. And lastly, just grab the bottom of the forks and just give it a gentle pull. 
just to check him for any movement. Now there is movement coming from this one, which that's only coming from the stand. So they're absolutely fine. That's the front end check. So I'm going to show you how to adjust your drive belt and check uh, the operation of it. So first of all, we need to uh, undo the two Zeus fasteners, very similar to on the other side. Just to push in, quarter of a turn, then pop out. And the same on the other side. Give the uh, case a little wiggle on it to come off. Pop that there, and this is our drive belt. Now, when we're looking at the drive belt, we're looking for cracks, any nasty tears, and some wear. So, you just run through it. So we're just looking on the inner edge of the belt, just here for any tears or cracks, any sign of wear or damage. Yeah, and then we're just gonna have a look here, just to make sure there isn't any thread, again, wear or damage on the belt. So now we're just gonna check the measurements. 10 or 20 mil, um, and as you can see, it's far beyond that, so we're going to adjust it up. So first of all, you need to undo four bolts, your top bolt and your bottom bolt, and again on the other side, and use a 13 mil socket, and you undo them anti-clockwise, or as I say, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. And again on the bottom. So now you can see that we can move the drive belt. And as we move it back, you can see the tension getting better. So all we need to do is pull it back. And you see the markings on here. When you tighten it up, you just make sure that they're even both sides. Obviously, when you're tightening these, um, talk them up to the, what's specified in your workshop manual. And again, we're going to tighten the ones up on the other side. We can just check our measurement now to make sure it's within the 10 to 20 mil measurement. That seems fine. It's also best to check it with someone sitting on the vehicle, but we've got a good amount of adjustment there. And I say check the drive belt. So we're just going to take a quick look at the shock absorber. Um, just firstly making sure it's securely mounted. So we're going to use a 17 mil spanner on the ring side. And just give it a little tweak, just to make sure it's tight. And then again on the bottom. It is. You haven't got to lean on it or anything like that, or over tighten any bolts. And just look at the coil spring here. We're just looking for any rust, cracks or damages, anything that doesn't look right. Um, but this one seems fine. Now if you look into this part here, onto the stanchion, you're just looking for any wear marks, pitting, and any signs of oil. If you've got oil on there, it means that the shock absorber seal could be leaking. But this one looks fine. So I'm happy with the rear shock. Next, we're just going to check the, uh, the drive chain uh, that actually links the pedals uh, to the rear wheel, uh, which is also a method that we use to start this, this moped. First of all, you've got two Zeus fasteners here and here, which they undo quite easily. Just use a flat bladed screwdriver, push and turn, and you see that they pop out. And the same again on this one. Once they're out, just give it a little pull. And you see that the cover comes off, and there's your two Zeus fasteners. Now looking at the chain system, be aware you don't want to get your fingers caught in there because you probably will uh, end up without a finger. Now what we're looking for is any damage to the links and to the sprockets, no hooking effect, and just general wear and tear. Now if we turn it round, you may see that it's all turning okay and nothing's broken. This one looks quite fine. Uh, we've got this lever here. If you lift it up, it engages the engine to the pedals to start it and obviously to pull away. If you put it down, it disengages it and you can use it as a push bike. So this is the pedal disengaged, so you can turn it like a bicycle. So yeah, that's your chain system.
So next we're going to do something a little bit more interesting and just checking tyres and adjusting the belt. We're actually going to remove the frame from the engine and clean the carburetor because if you bought a winter bike that's been sitting around for a long time, you're going to need to clean the carburetor. So I'm going to show you how you do it. Um, so first of all, we're just going to take these covers off, disconnect the cables that link the engine to the frame, and I'll show you the process to do that. Now it's a good idea to get yourself uh, a little pot or something similar that you can put all your nuts and bolts in so you know where they go. If you're not quite sure, it's always good you can either take a photo or label them. So this is what I do, I put them in a pot. So this is one part that's taken off. Any parts that you take off, always sort of try and put in a, an area where you're not going to tread on them or trip on them. So in this case, I'm just going to put them on my workbench. So we've got all the electrical connectors for the bike. These will need to be disconnected to allow us to remove the frame. Pay attention because you may need to label these with masking tape. Okay, so that's them disconnected and out of the way. Next, we're going to um, take the fuel line off. So ensure that your fuel tap is off. This is the off position. If you take it off with it on, you're going to get petrol everywhere. So make sure you pay attention to that. I'm just going to get a pair of long nose pliers to just help pry off the fuel hose. So gently, just get the fuel pipe, move the clip forward, and it comes off. You will get a couple of drips of fuel out of there, but you don't want it pouring out. So, I'm um, going to disconnect the throttle cable. And it's just this little screw here. So if we undo this, and then I'll show you how to get it off. Anti-clockwise, just nip it. Don't take the screw all the way out because you'll probably drop it. You only need to undo it a few turns. And then if you just get a pair of long nose pliers, and pull the cable back through. And there we have it. This one's a little bit frayed, um, but we can trim that down, that's not a problem. Next, we're gonna disconnect the decompressor cable. Okay, so if you just grab the cable here, and just give it a small pull, and then pull it down, it will release from the lever, and then it just slots out like that, as you can see. And then we're gonna, just gonna disconnect it at the bottom so that it's completely free. So we're gonna remove the fuel tank now, which is two 10 mil bolts, on this side and on the other side. So we've de disconnected the decompressor cable at the top and we're going to disconnect it at the bottom. If you look here, you can see where it mounts in. It's just a simple case. Pushing it up, pulling it round, and presto, it's off. Next, we're just going to make sure there's no, nothing else holding it on. Got one more cable coming down, which is the rear brake cable. So we'll disconnect that at the top. Okay, to disconnect that, you'll need an eight mil and a 10 mil spanner. So it's just loosening it off, anti-clockwise, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Just wind it in. Okay, let's put a bit of slack in it now so that we can disconnect here at the rear. Grab it with a pair of pliers, push the arm forward, and the cable is released. There. Okay, we're going to need to remove this adjuster. Okay, so that's the cable removed. Removing the cable so it's not getting in the way. Next, we're going to look into unbolting the um, shock absorbers and the engine mounting and actually removing the frame from the engine. So make sure you secure the vehicle down, especially before you start to undo any suspension components because it can become insecure and fall over. So just make sure you've got it strapped down. Firstly, we're gonna remove the lower shock mounting and the, the same on the other side, because as you can see, this is where it's linked to the engine. So we're just undo this one and the one on the other side. Okay, so we're gonna undo the lower shock mounting bolt. There we go. And there we go, it's out. So we'll do the same on the other side. Now as this one comes out, just be aware that the, uh, the bike will wiggle around a little bit. That's why we have to strap it down. Okay, next we're gonna do the 
the top engine mount, lower the bike down and you'll see the chassis coming off the engine. And when this bolt comes out, beware because the back will drop down a little bit, so your assistant will need to be ready. Okay, so it's out with its washer. Put it in your pot. Now before you start wandering around trying to get it off, just make sure your path is clear that you're not going to trip or anything like that and find a place to put your chassis. So, lift it off. Right, so we're going to take our carburetor off and give it a clean because most of the time that they've been sitting around, your fuel have probably gone stale. So while you're here, you might as well clean it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. There's four bolts here on top of the reed housing. So we're going to unbolt, we'll remove the carburetor and take a little look. So under these four bolts, do them in a crisscross pattern. Lightly pull, pull your tubes out. But one thing I should mention is that get a clean piece of tissue or rag just to put into the uh, intake area, just to stop any foreign bodies or nasty stuff getting in there. So you just pop it in like that. This is where the airflow blows through. Um, it's drawn through from the engine. So we're gonna give this a good clean and just make sure that it's working correctly. To remove the float bowl or the carburetor, it's two Phillips head screws and we're just going to remove them and have a look inside. So if we take a look, you can see it's pretty nasty in there. We're going to just clean up some of this uh, off fuel and a little bit of rust. And also we're going to clean the jet out on the carburetor um, and just inspect the float needle. First of all, we'll just use some air tape cleaner or carburetor cleaner. And we'll just squirt it into the float bowl. I'm just going to pull this little pin out. And lift up and remove the float needle. Be careful not to drop it or lose it. And we're just looking to make sure this little spring part is working and there's no grooves on the actual seat. This is where the fuel enters the carburetor and is regulated by the actual float. This works in a way a bit like your toilet bullcock. So it just, when it floats up, it shuts the valve. When it empties, it releases. So we're going to give it a squirt for our carburetor jet. And just making sure that it comes out the other side in there. Okay, uh, we'll just get some clean tissue to give it a wipe over. Get your little float needle. If you see, there's a little groove there and that just slots in there like so. And then we're just gonna turn it up, dangles it down. Just plop it in. Just make sure it's all working. So next we're gonna assemble the float bowl onto the carburetor, just making sure that your O-ring is in contact. We're gonna just check our reed valve for any cracks or damage. That looks absolutely fine. And that's one of the basic ways to clean your carburetor. So we've cleaned our carburetor and we're gonna put it on. Place your reed valve in and pay attention to that your drain hose is rooted down here. And we're in position. Just taking note that this rubber part of the intake is sitting nice and square on the back of the air box. If you do the box up in a crisscross pattern, just make sure that the plate will sit nice and square. 
Just do them up evenly in that crisscross manner. And just tighten them up to a specified torque that's in your workshop manual. Just take a look that all your breathers are rooted correctly because you don't want any trap breathers uh, or getting caught in anything else. And that's it, carburetor is on. So now we're going to remove the cylinder head, uh, cylinder, and take a look at the piston. Uh, in order to do that, we need to remove the exhaust. There's two 10 mil nuts here and here. We're going to undo them first at bolt ons and a manifold. That's one of the nuts. You can see they're a bit grubby and grimy. Pop that in our tray. That's the second nut. Just need to take this cover off to gain access to the other two bolts. So the two 13 mil nut and bolts that hold the exhaust on. some washers there as well, so just remember to put them on. That's one side, and we're going to do the same on the other side. Again, this is our nut and bolts to hold the other side on. There we have the exhaust is off. Um, just making note of any rust or damage. Um, but this one looks all right, a little bit grubby, but uh, I think we can reuse that. We're gonna remove the spark plug. This is our spark plug. Um, we're just looking for any sort of oily residue and just, we will check the gap, um, but we'll do that at a later stage. You've got four bolts, hold the cylinder head on, 10 mil. Undo them in a crisscross pattern. Just support the head when you come to the last one, because you don't want it to fall on the floor. Okay, remove the bolts. One. Two, three, four. That's your cylinder head. And that's your little decompressor valve that we disconnected the cable on earlier on. You can see it working like that. So this is our cylinder and cylinder head gasket. We're replacing that because you shouldn't really use them again. So we've got our cylinder head off. This is the crown of our piston. And I'll show you what it does when the engine's actually running. If you can see, it's going down to bottom dead center. And as it turns around, it's going back up to top dead center. And this is top dead center right there. So as you can see, it's got all carbon on it. So we're gonna give it a bit of a clean up as well. Now we've unbolted our cylinder head, which is what holds the cylinder on as well. So you have to give them a little bit of a wiggle um, to get them off. Sometimes you even have to give them a bit of a bash with a rubber mallet. Just give it a stern hit, make sure it is a rubber mallet. So give it a bit of a wiggle and you'll find it come free. And there we go, as we gently pull it off, you'll see the piston exposed. Uh, you're just looking for any scores or gouges, wear and tear inside of the cylinder, but this one actually looks okay. 
So it's our piston. Again, we're looking for wear, wear or damage. Broken piston rings, stuck piston rings. But again, this one's okay, apart from a little bit of carbon on the top. I'm just going to check if there's any play in the small end bearing. Now, you will have side to side like this, but you shouldn't have up and down. We're going to remove the piston now. It's good practice to put some clean rag or some clean tissue in here to stop any foreign bodies getting in. There's a small pick. And you'll see in here, there is a, a little clip. Now you just need to pull that clip out. And be careful, because they do ping. Okay, now you're going to have to remove the gudgeon pin. So you should just be able to give it a light push. Sometimes you can just use your extension bar to give it a little shove. So it's just small end bearing. So we're just looking for any signs of wear or damage. This looks okay. You see here, there's a little bit of sign of blow by on the piston rings. So generally you would replace on those, but you could also put it into the cylinder and measure the, measure the actual rings for wear but this is a good indication that they're starting to blow past. Now we're just going to check the play on our con rod on the big end. So just remove your tissue briefly. Put the con rod at the furthest point it will go. Now you will get side to side play like this, but you shouldn't have any, any play up and down. If you just hold the top of the con rod like this and just turn the engine over slowly, should be able to feel your main bearing, should be nice and smooth. And they feel quite smooth, so we're quite lucky there. And we just want to check for any play or movement on the side there. But that's okay. And that's how you remove the top end of a two stroke engine. So we're going to remove the crank cases, uh, remove the crank. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, first of all, we need to remove the front variator and the belt. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. There we go. This is a variator. Uh, and there's little rollers in there that come in and out and they change the gear ratio um, on the belt. We're going to remove this nut, um, which I'm going to need an impact air gun to do that. <coughs> this is the nut that I've taken off. There is a washer is there as well. I'm just going to pull that off. And put those on there. And we'll loosely put these bolts in so we know where everything went. Okay, pop this to one side and uh, we can put that on when we come to it later. Okay, remove your belt. Next, we need to remove the nut inside here. There's a nut and washer in there. Um, we're going to use the impact air gun to take it off and there's also a Honda special tool that you use to pull this pulley off. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. And there's the nut. And if you give this pulley a good pull, it comes off with your washer. Again, just put them in there so you know where they went and place it to one side. Now here, you need your Honda special tool to get this pulley off. 24 mil spanner and 14 mil spanner. Just hold the two. When you hear the big click, you haven't broken anything, don't worry. You just pulled it off. And there we go. And this is your clutch housing and clutch shoes. It's known as a centrifugal clutch. And as the engine speed increases, the centrifugal force drives these clutches out. 
something like this. So you're just checking for wear and tear on the clutch shoes and on the springs. This is your crank seal, so we're just making sure that it, there's no weeping or it's you know not deteriorated or anything like that. Right here, you can give the crank a bit of a wiggle up and down to just check if there's any play in your main bearings. So we're going to um, remove the flywheel. Um, you can use an air gun, but you can also use the Honda Special Tool to hold it in. Now just slots in these grooves. A 14mm socket. Hold it in place and oh, undo it. Remove your nut. Remove your flywheel. Place that to one side for later on. And as you can see in here, you've got your stator plate and old fashioned points. You won't see a point system much on any modern vehicles today, but this is them here. And they open and close like that every time the engine is spun. Okay, so we're going to remove the points um, cam, known as the contact breakers as well, but we need a puller for that. This is our gear puller, um, which can unbolt the stator coils to get a bit of be better access. So we've got enough room to get our puller in. Turn it up on there. And there we have it. And this just allows, it's an eccentric cam. It just opens the points timing. This is the um, contact breaker cam. So it opens and closes the contact breakers to give the right ignition timing. Next we're going to remove the stator cover which is two 8mm bolts. There we go. The two bolts, we'll put them in our pot. That's our stator off. One thing to take note is, you see this little pad here, when we reassemble, we just have to put a bit of grease on it or some oil, and that helps just to lubricate the cam. It's just a little sponge. Okay, we'll remove this engine now. And then we're going to move around to the other side and under the bolts there. Okay, on the last bolt, just be careful. You don't want to undo it and then drop on the floor and damage anything. So just place a hand on it just to support it. And then your engine crankcase is off. We've put it onto a nice clean piece of cardboard because you don't want any contaminants, grease, you know, all bits of old metal or stones in there. So I've put it on a nice clean piece of uh, cardboard and then we're going to disassemble it. We're going to remove the carburetor and the reed housing and then we're going to undo the bolts on this side, there, there and there and then we're going to split the crank cases. Okay, so that is the carburetor and the reed valve off. We'll just place that over here. Next we're going to undo the crankcase bolts, which are these. One, two, three, four, five, six bolts. Okay. 
Remove your six bolts. Six bolts are removed. And just make sure that you have removed all of your bolts. The crankcase is now ready to become split. You just need your rubber, rubber mallet. You can use a crankcase splitter, but to be fair, you know, you can just give it a good firm tap with a hammer. So we're gonna just put a nut on the end of our crank there to stop any thread damage. And we'll just put it on flush. And using a copper mallet, we're just gonna give it a few thrusts. So move your nut. And there we have it. It's your crank case. And this is your crank shaft. This turns up and down, like this. These are your main bearings that you would check. I'm going to remove the crank from the cases. Again, just get a nut, pop it on the end of your shaft so you don't damage any threads. Just a light tap. tiny crankshaft. What would you want to check is for any rust or damage, again like when we had the top off, just for any up and down movement, side to side play is fine. And checking your main bearings, you will find there is a small amount of play in them. No roughness or anything like that. These are a little bit rough so we're going to replace these. Again on this side, I'm going to check this main bearing and the crank seals as well. So now we've removed our crankshaft, our big end bearing is fine. So we're going to replace the main bearings uh, and the crank seals. So we're going to use this splitter to just remove the bearing from the crankshaft. turning it evenly on both sides. Again, we've got the splitter all the way down. We're just gonna put a nut on the end of our crankshaft. and just supporting it in your hand with a copper hammer. Remove the bearing. your crankshaft don't run away so support it with something like that. So we're going to just remove the bearing from this case and obviously from the crank seal as well. We'll gently pull this one out and we're going to remove the bearing from the case. We're going to use a bit of heat just to make it a bit easier. Okay, bearing is now out. 
going to give this a bit of a clean. Okay, we'll put a new bearing in. sure the bearing goes in nice and square. As we can see at the moment, it's just starting to go this way. Just do a little tap on the edge. Okay, now it's seated. that tongue, I don't know if you can hear that, changing tongue, turn it around, put a new seal in. And there we have it. Okay, so we're going to assemble the crankcase halves. Replace our gasket. And this all the crank into the crank cases. Now, one crit critical thing to remember is there's two sides to the crankshaft, so you don't want to put it in the wrong way around. So determine which side you're going to put it in. If you look, this is the stator side, and this is the drive shaft side where the variator was sitting. Got a wood rough key which goes on the stator side, this side, and the longer side which goes on the drive variator side. So we're going to install it, wood rough key, into the stator side. Just being gentle with the seal as you come on to seat it. Okay, so we're in, and make sure that your crankshaft is in the right position with the con rod facing this way. If you get your nut, pop it into your crankshaft, hold it in place. If you to go into place. Start to assemble your bolts in, in the right order. Doing them up in a crisscross fashion to pull the case in evenly. Do your six bolts up in a crisscross pattern to the specified torque setting uh, in your workshop manual. So we've fitted the gasket on there, we've removed the old one. So now we can put the crank case back into the chassis.
Okay, so we're going to tighten up our engine mount bolts. Okay, we're going to refit our carburetor. we're going to fit our piston. Now we would generally replace the piston rings but we don't have them at this time. Always take note that there's an EX mark on there which points to the exhaust. Pretty small in bearing it in, make sure it's got some lubricant on it. Place a little clip with a new one. Now these can be quite tricky. So try and get the two ends in first and push the back in. You've got to be careful not to damage the piston. Let's double check that it is in correctly, and it is. Next, we're going to fit our cylinder. Now you're making sure that the piston rings are in their grooves because if they don't fit in, you will cause damage. So you have to make sure they're in their grooves, lining with the dots. Use a little bit of lubricant on the bore. A little bit of oil. <coughs> Squeezing the rings together with your fingers. And there you go. Don't forget to remove your piece of... Uh, Okay, and the new head gasket, just making sure it goes in the right place, like that. Two bolts in to keep it in place. And then slide it in. Excellent, should be able to go now. So yeah, do your head up in a crisscross pattern to the manufacturer's torque setting. Excellent. Refit your spark plug. And we're going to refit our stator. Push fit through. We've got to refit our stator coils.
earlier on we said we was going to put some oil onto this little pad. Um, so that we will do. Just remove it. Just a small drop of oil onto the little sponge. Dab it in. Just pop it back in. Then we get our contact breaker cam, making sure that the wood rough key is in line. It'll push fit on, and then once you put the flywheel on, it'll pull it all in. If you notice on the f little um, points, which line up with these three points on the actual rotor. We're going to line them up. Oh, thing. That. That bolt on. We're just going to refit our clutch. And the actual drive pulley. Okay, so we're going to fit our uh, variator in the reverse order that we took it off. This has stopped the variator cover coming off and it helps to keep the grease in for the rollers inside. It changes the, um, the, the gearing. It's a Honda-matic uh, gear system. A bit like your push bike. When you change the gears, you've got higher gears at the front, smaller gears at the back and you change it all around. Basically, when you rev, the rollers come out which allows the belt to expand and it changes the ratio of the gearing. Let's fit the exhaust. Sometimes you may need to replace the exhaust gasket, but this time it's, it's fine. I think we're ready to put the chassis on. Okay. So I just hold it. You, you just hold it, it there. Okay, that's that in. Great, right, stay there. Right, down you come, at the back. Okay, we're going to reattach our decompressor cable.
Okay, we can fit our fuel tank. Put a little bit of lubrication on the rubber. Okay, we just need to reroute our fuel pipe. Okay, so we're just going to check the air filter and just take a look for any dirt or damage. And this one's fine, so we're just going to pop it back in. Part one, part two will be at Silverstone UTC um, and we'll make it not looking so granny-fied and uh, hopefully we can zoop it up a bit and make it a bit quicker and a uh, bit more cool.